When I read the comments underneath my YouTube channel videos, I'm often surprised by how many people say that they've been watching my videos uh, or been watching other videos too and just haven't actually started themselves. So I wanted to tackle that um, issue of getting started, actually stopping watching and actually doing today. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my top five tips on actually getting started. So tip number one is what do we art journal on? And the answer to that question is very, very simple. And it's anything you can get your hands on. Now, there are bespoke art journals that you can purchase, uh, which are quite expensive, that you can use um, for creating your art journals. But if you don't want to go through that expense of actually purchasing a bespoke art journal, then there are a thousand and one other things that you can use as the base for your art journal and I'm just going to go through a couple of those with you right now. So the first one and probably the easiest one is an old magazine or one of those free magazines that you can pick up at a supermarket. Now this is a seasonal one for Christmas from one of my uh, from a local very cheap um, supermarket chain. So this is a nice um, brochure on all the food that's available for Christmas. Now the paper in here is quite nice. It's not necessarily thick but we can get around that. Um, but it's a nice size. Um, it, it measures, let's just grab a ruler and I will tell you what it measures. It measures just over eight by just over nine. So that's a nice size to use as the basis as an art journal. Now you can recover it, you can get over the fact that the pages are not particularly thick by gluing them together and you can paint over or incorporate some of the images that are already in there into your art journal pages. Now when we create art journal pages we sometimes stick down um, collage items, napkins, tissue paper, uh, that kind of thing to create a little bit of interest in the background. You already have that with this. So you can use an old magazine or a free magazine that you can pick up from supermarkets or from anywhere. These things come through the post often uh, or just get pushed through your letterbox um, as junk mail. So utilise free stuff rather than going to the expense of buying uh, an art journal for that particular purpose. The other thing you can use is if you have an old diary. Now this old diary measures six inches by eight inches, which is cool because this Dilusions journal measures five by seven or five by eight. And it's practically the same. So if you have an old diary, instead of throwing it away, utilize some of the pages or utilize the pages in there to create an art journal and again if the pages are too thin that doesn't matter just stick a few together to create that thickness for the base that you want. This was a scrapbook album that I picked up for cheap again at a uh, in a supermarket so and I utilized it into my art journal. Now, this is 10 inches by 10 inches but again it wasn't supposed to be for an art journal so I utilized what I saw because I liked the size, I liked the fact that it was square and I liked the fact that it was a decent size. Come on, refocus again Mr Camera. There we go. So you can utilise um, scrapbook albums and that kind of thing to create an art journal. The other thing you can use is cardboard. Now this is just some old packaging um, from a product that I, that I purchased a while ago. In fact this was for the glass cutting mat. That uh, it came in this corrugated cardboard. You can use cardboard. You can use the packaging from cereals, you know, breakfast cereals. You can cut the backs off any of those and use those as a basis to art journal on. And finally, 
you could literally journal on the back of an old envelope. So utilising old envelopes that come through the post is a great way to, to start the basis of an art journal. And again, if they're not thick enough for you, if you want a little bit more stability, then glue them together. It's as simple as that. So you can use practically anything as the base for an art journal. So tip number two is what do you art journal about? What's going to be the content of your art journals? It doesn't really matter. And I wouldn't even think about what you're actually going to create, what pages you're going to create in your art journal at this stage. What I would do is I would just experiment and play. Just get some colour, get some texture, and just start throwing stuff down on a page and seeing how your products are reacting together. Don't even try to create a work of art or a masterpiece at this early stage. Just play and experiment and have a bit of fun putting colour down onto the page because if you try and create something without really practising, then you're not really going to achieve what you want to to start off with. And it's almost like picking up a guitar or a musical instrument straight away and expecting to be able to play a concert, a concert piece without practicing first. You'll never do it. So the trick is just to play. So have a go at throwing some paint down on a page, manipulate the paint, put your fingers in there, just enjoy getting messy and experiment with the products that you have. And that leads me on to number three is to what products do you need to get started? So literally, this is all you need to get started with art journaling. A couple of paintbrushes. Now, you don't need to go out and buy some expensive paintbrushes. These were very, very inexpensive and bought at a local home depot store in the, the arts and crafts section. And I bought 12 of these for less than $10. So that's all you really need. You can actually purchase these from a kid's um, range of arts and crafts if you really wanted to. As for paint colours, I'll just move those to one side. Um, my tip is that you really only need a white, a black, a blue, a yellow and a red. Now, if you have any knowledge of um, primary colours, which is what th these are, you can pretty much make any colour you want out of these three. The red and black are quite handy just to either darken or lighten. So with the red and the blue, you can create purple, you can create orange with the yellow and the red, and you can create green with the yellow and the blue. And you can create any kind of shade in between or tone in between. If you want to lighten those colours up, add a little white. If you want to darken them, add a little black. With those few colours, you can pretty much create every single colour that there is in existence. From deep greens by adding a little bit of dark to really light greens and pastel colours by adding some white to it. And you can do that just by using those few colours. So if you only buy five colours, you can still create whatever colour you need. Now, you don't also need to buy expensive paints. You can buy very, very inexpensive poster paints to get started with. You can buy um, the kind of paints that you would give to children to play with. Because if you're experimenting and you're playing and you're learning how to use the colours, mix the colours, then that's all you really need. You don't need to buy expensive paints. Now, there are so many different paints out there on the market, ranging from professional artist grade to student grade to just basic arts and crafts ones. Go for the cheap ones first. That's my best advice. Don't spend a lot of money. You really, really don't need to. And just have a play with them and see what you can create out of those colours. Now, 
Some people also recommend that you purchase stencils. Well, I don't really think you need to buy stencils to get started. You can just go and have a look around the house and see what you have that you can create some texture and marks with. You don't necessarily need stencils. So, household items. Now this is just a piece of rubberized mat that is used to hold rugs and carpets in place on a stone or wooden floor or even a tile floor. That would create some great texture and create a nice grid pattern. This is, I believe this was used for, um, it was either cross stitch or for some kind of tapestry work and again will create some great shapes. Bubble wrap is a fantastic piece of equipment that you can use to add colour and texture just by painting on and dabbing to create. This, <laughs> this is a very old fashioned piece of equipment that is used to hold soap in place on the side of a sink or a bath. Yeah, but will create some great texture in your paint. And of course you've got anything that will create um, shapes, lines, you can create spirals, anything that will you can use to dip into the paint. As you can see, these are a couple of lids from products that I've done exactly that with. So this is the residue of paint that I've used to dip in and create circles on an art journal page. So you don't need to purchase loads and loads of stencils to get started. And the other thing, or the final thing, I would advise you to get is a pen to write and journal with. Now there are certain pens out there, depending on what you're actually writing on, um, that will work. Uh, a standard ballpoint pen will work on a lot of surfaces, particularly the poster paints, the very cheaper poster paints. But if you want something that you know is going to work, then this is probably the product, the product that most people would use for art journaling and writing on an art journal page, because it will pretty much write on almost anything. But you could also get yourself something like a Chinagraph pencil, which will also write on shiny surfaces, glass, um, onto acrylic paint, that kind of stuff as well, if you didn't want to use a pen. But something to write with also would be a great addition to a very basic stash. So that pretty much is all you need to get started on creating art journal pages. So tip number four is to copy. Copying isn't cheating, it's a way of getting inspiration if you find it difficult to, to break that blank page. Now, if you look at what other artists have done, you don't necessarily have to go to um, like watch videos like mine on YouTube or, um, or go through Pinterest and have a look to see what other people have done and then try and copy pages that you like. You can also get inspiration from um, from the masters as well because abstract art, which is really what art journaling is all about, has been practiced by many many artists over many many years. You can get inspiration from books, um, from artists such as the Mondrian, there's an absolute plethora of artists out there that you can get inspiration from. So have a search, look on the internet Look at um, what previous artists have done. I mean, this is Mark Rothko, one of the probably the most famous abstract artists that there has been. And this is one of his creations. Now, it's just a study in red. So why can't you do something like that? All you have to do is just to practice by putting colour down on page. Now, this book is called <clears throat> the 20th century art book and lists hundreds of artists with an example of each of their work in there. Now I purchased this for exactly this purpose, for inspiration. I can open this book, flick through it and find something that I could have a go at trying to recreate. This page could be something that you could have a go at doing. So copy, look to see what other people have done in the past and see whether or not you can have a go at recreating something that may look like that, 
but may be completely different in your own style. And again, don't worry about defining and getting your own style until you've settled into your artist's skin. And my final tip for the day is don't be too hard on yourself. Don't criticise yourself. Do me a favour and just look over your shoulder. There's nobody there breathing down your neck looking to see what you're creating. So it doesn't matter if what you're creating isn't pleasing to you. Have a look at what you're doing and just see what it is. Ask yourself, what is it about it that you don't like? Is it the colour combination? Have you put too much colour down? And just refine what it is that you've done. If it's gone brown, it means you've mixed possibly the wrong two colours together. If it's too dark, then add a little white next time. Just look at what you're doing, experiment and play, but don't be too hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up over it. We've all made mistakes and we all continue to make mistakes, but you don't have to share those mistakes. You don't have to show your creations to the world. I choose to do that um, because I'm a show off. No other reason for that really. Um, but I like to share what I'm creating because I want people to also start creating too. So I hope you've found these five tips to getting started in art journaling a little bit helpful and that you will have that courage just to get going and actually get some colour down on the page. Well, that's all from me for today. If you've enjoyed this video please remember to give it a thumbs up and share the video with all your friends particularly those that haven't got started yet and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for today. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.